My mobile is practically everything. Many schools have taken the decision to ban mobile phones. I wouldn't even know how to work a mobile phone properly. 61.5% uh, of our respondents said there were no benefits for using mobile phones in schools. The fear of what might happen. Like being a mammal running around amongst dinosaurs. This provides an opportunity for, for the children to engage in their learning in a way that I haven't ever seen before. Let the students decide how they want to use them. Actually, you know what? We don't have a choice. Young learners already have this technology and for the very first time, schools don't have to provide that. They just have to embrace it in a meaningful and useful way. By 2008, there will be more mobile phones than people. Are they a force for good or an example of technology gone awry? Are we creating a passive generation, spoon-fed on unsuitable content? Or will we be left wondering why we haven't embraced an all-pervasive technology as a means to harness the creative explosion in youth culture in ways sometimes difficult to imagine? A quarter of 11 to 17 year olds would feel unwanted if they went a whole day without their phone ringing. I'd be lost without my phone because I just, I don't know, I just feel lost. Like an extra limb to us, I think, because yeah. we use it pretty much all the time. It's a generational thing, I think, because <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of my uh, means of communication are not joined up in the same way as yours are and the children are probably even more advanced mm -hmm. again. Um, so I, I think there is a generational issue here probably. If you think of uh, when you were 12 or when I was 12, which was a long time ago, but my communication skills were nowhere near as, as great as the kids are nowadays. We're seeing a, a media landscape now that, that children are very much native to, uh, whereas grown-ups are the immigrants. Starting school, I mean, they're the first school children of the 21st century. They don't know a world without the internet. They don't know a world without 20 channels of, 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 of programming. They don't know the, wor the world without being digitally market marketed to and profiled. 25% of 7 to 10 year olds have a mobile phone. Um, the child clearly has an understanding of how this digital technology works. It's an extension to their life. It's embedded within their life whereas the establishment hasn't really caught up. Um, the establishment is busy worrying about PowerPoint when the children are already uploading YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube. Um, <fun>. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seventy percent of eleven-year-olds own a mobile phone. Half of all eleven to seventeen-year-olds consider it to be acceptable to text while they're having a conversation. A quarter of eleven to seventeen-year-olds have received a text asking them on a date. Every day, children make more than four and a half thousand calls to Childline, and of those four and a half thousand calls, eighty percent are from mobile phones. On average, young people make. Oh no, I forgot it. 37% <laughs> of 11 to 17 year olds dodge their parents' phone calls. On average, young people make or receive three and a half calls every day. 
One problem in thinking about technology is that is you often get one group of people who say this particular technology is earth-shattering importance, it's going to transform our, our, our world for, for the good. If we don't take it up as quickly as we can, we're going to be left behind by other countries and it's all going to be uh, terrible. On the other hand, you get people saying that the technology is incredibly powerful but damaging, dangerous, it's going to take us away from what is essentially uh, uh, human, again with, with, uh, with, with very uh, important uh, consequences, in this case uh, negative ones. 11% of 11 to 17 year olds have had their mobile phones stolen. The difficulties that are presented by mobile phones is that school children with mobile phones, it essentially makes them a target for street robbery because mobile phones nowadays they have all sorts of features and they're very, very expensive, very small, very pocketable. Oh yeah, you get that in old schools, you get them nicked, everything they do. We've had phones nicked all the reading time. But it's just one of those things, you know, kids come up, sir, I've had my phone nicked, where'd you have it nicked? Outside, such and such a room, library, Spring Grove. We check on camera, sometimes we catch them, sometimes we can't. It's just the way it goes. It's use in, in terms of bullying, which may, may start in and around the school, but very often then is carried on through an evening and, and at weekends with messages and, and photographs. And, and it's, a, it's a way of carrying intimidation and misery you know, in, into people's you know, private time. And the new phenomenon also of um, using mobiles to, to take video clips of lessons or to take photographs of teachers or other pupils. Several respondents said, I've had photographs taken of me without my knowledge. I've had video clips taken of my lesson without my knowledge. Two of them said, these have been posted on YouTube. So, you know, the, 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 the practice of taking uh, cameras into lessons, mobile phone cameras into lessons and using them and then using the evidence against teachers is, is becoming more of an issue. I've got this custard pie, I'm going to get my teacher, will you film it for me? And it will be a big surprise, it will be a huge joke. You know, <laughs> but clearly it's totally inappropriate and it's challenging um, authority, it's showing no respect and clearly that will be a really serious issue. I think there's a film of me um, in a drama lesson um, trying to generate some interest in the class and therefore behaving rather absurdly and unbeknownst to me this was you know recorded for everyone's entertainment I don't mind that too much but you, you can see uh, how that could be difficult and you you in particular when you're young you're goaded into doing things we all did it as young people uh, mobile phones is just another example of things that were done in the past the, the attack in the teacher's seat and all that going back many many decades ago and this it's, it's just a progression of it. The trouble is that this time it affects a lot of people uh, in, in a way that these kind of things never affected them before. That was just in the classroom, that was just amongst the pupils and the teacher then f could obviously uh, discipline at that point in time. With the, with the sort of photographing of or the picturing, videoing type thing of teachers and being abused or whatever, then that goes on to the websites uh, YouTube, whatever, and the teacher knows nothing about it. They can't do any discipline. The fact that the person that's taking the photograph is behind the camera, as it were, and you, you don't know who did it. There's nobody to get the blame. And this is where your sort of uh, social responsibility come in, comes in, and that is one of the things, unfortunately, that we have to teach children. It, it's, an, it's an issue that we, f we face in schools, and one can understand why um, many schools have taken the decision to ban mobile phones uh, and the use of mobile phones because of the negative impact. You know, these things may happen, but the genie is out of the, uh, out of the lamp. We, we can't put it back. You know, there were, before all this there were pencils and, and people used to write nasty things on the wall. Bullying has been a, a nasty part of, of humanity for forever. Um, and indeed, you know, it has to be dealt with. But at the end of the day, this technology isn't going to go away. Um, and we need to f form 
acceptable use policies and knowledge within the within young learners and users of this technology so they understand what is acceptable and what isn't. Uh, technology is neither good nor bad, um, it's neither important nor unimportant, it's, uh, it's, it's there to be, to, be made, uh, to be made use of and um, we should make a sensible, a sensible choice. I think it's a great mistake to think that we're participating in a, in a world historical drama when we use a mobile phone or don't use a mobile uh, phone, we're not. The impact of mobile phones on the young is impossible to measure. They simply don't know a world without. Fear of the damaging uses of this technology may well be a reaction to this generational gap. But perhaps it is also the realisation that a lack of technical understanding hides the fact that we struggle to comprehend the culture that surrounds it. Three quarters of 11 to 17 year olds have had their phones bought by their parents. The main reason was for safety. Um, they tend to go out a lot more these days, and for me it was just a safety issue, really. I mean, they, they're both good children anyway. They don't uh, abuse their phones. Well, I hope they don't. But, um, I mean, as a parent's point of view, um, I haven't really seen any videos. Uh, and then again, Sonny hasn't shown me any videos, if there are any. Can I log on to YouTube and find you doing anything? No. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, like every other parent, can see the benefits of uh, mobile phones. And if you have a teenager, there's very few parents. I mean, the one rule we have is if she's out, her mobile's on. When she gets into real trouble, if the mobile's off. And I learnt to text, actually, uh, because she's going to so many events where she wouldn't hear the phone go. That's what actually forced me into learning how to text. OK, this is a, an interesting text message, which is... Um heavily um, SMSed up. I think if I was about 16, I'd probably understand it more. Um, but it seems to be implying... Um... Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, SMS. SMS was, was designed for... For tech, tech whiz by D Mobile Phone... Oops. Companies are never meant for... It's gone. Hold on, which one is it? the consumer market, the short message service. Can I start again? As we know, it was an accident. In 2006, 35 something tech messages were sent uh, around the UK. In the UK. SMS was designed for technical use by the mobile phone companies and never meant for the consumer market. The short message services we know it was an accident. In 2006, 35 billion text messages were sent in the UK. And about 5 or 10p each, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I certainly think there is a gap um, between the reality of what's happening with technology and, and the capability and also where it's going and between that and, and the bodies that are making the decisions about how these types of technologies can be integrated within teaching practice. 61.5% of our respondents said there were no benefits for teachers for pupils using mobile phones in schools. Uh, five years ago, the argument against mobile phones in school would quite simply have had to do with the fact that young people are bringing expensive equipment um, into a school environment and it's either going to go missing, it's going to be pinched, and from a teacher's point of view, um, there's, a hassle, there's, there's a hassle, there's a job to be done in, in trying to resolve those kind of problems. It just is a problem that's not necessary um, in a school environment. It just, it just doesn't work. A school should be, feel free to, to, to reject the use of the technologies they think are inappropriate to their educational mission. It's a great mistake to confuse education with the availability of, of, uh, of new technologies. Now, um, there is a, there's a great pressure to, to do that. Um, but uh, we should uh, remember, I think, that, um, that in education the, um, the old methods are, are often the ones that, that persist and indeed that, that, uh, that parents want, for good or ill. The establishment, if you like, um, schools, government, um, are in a bit of a pickle. Um, being busy driving and banging the uh, so-called ICT drum computers in schools and ICT suites and 
um, giving young people ICT skills, you know, how to use Microsoft Word or PowerPoint and all this stuff, when the reality is uh, this is of no use whatsoever um, to uh, an eight-year-old who, when they leave school, won't be confronted with uh, a big lump of tin um, and, and a big screen and a desk. My name is Ben Arnell, I'm a Year 4-5 teacher and I've been involved in the project since um, I think it was October time. When someone said you're going to use a mobile phone in, in class and they're going to be able to phone their friends and they're going to be able to text their friends, I didn't really see how that would benefit their learning or benefit their education. The using them now, I can definitely see a huge amount of benefits. Just because they're mobile, that's simple as that, you go on a trip, I went to go and see uh, the river, the very brook, it's called Beverly Brook in Richmond Park down the road. They took pictures of river, river erosion, they took pictures of meanders, and then they took them back and they connected them to the computer. And those are real powerful tools that we could have never used without those PDAs. They would have seen pictures, they would have seen them, but not been able to almost take those pictures back to school with them and work with them and play with them. And I'm not going to use them for the sake of using them. I'm only going to use them if they're going to benefit the children educationally. And we recently had a flood and uh, we're having a class assembly, so we thought we'd do a presentation on how, why the school was flooded. So we walked around the site looking at drainage points, looking at the guttering, looking where water goes, and they were basically like a little dictaphone making notes with their voice and then coming back to the classroom hearing them and writing them up into, uh, into a literacy report. The first day I showed them this, they said, Mr Utley, when are we getting them? And for the next three weeks before Christmas, I had this, I think, in the first week of December, and for the next three weeks before the end of, end of the school term, when are we getting them, when are we getting them, when are we getting them, when are we getting them? And the first day they got them, there was complete silence in the class. They were like... We were in the computer three, weren't yeah, we? <laughs> and it was like, I was thinking, where's the noise? And it was complete silence. It was wow. They picked them up, opened them up, turned them on, went onto the internet, started browsing on their favourite sites, started going into my favourites and looking on what sites I, you know, sort of regularly visited, and were just genuinely curious about how, how I used the device. It wasn't, it wasn't a situation where they picked them up and thought, ah, yeah, this is, uh, this is something I can do for me. They wanted to find out how I used it, how I communicated, so they were checking my email address, they were looking at my Skype account, they were looking to see if I had MSN active, and the head teacher was just beaming from ear to ear. She saw these kids just take this technology without any support from me and just get on with it. There's, there's no, they've used it really professionally without, you know, us really drumming it into them. We've sort of given them as much freedom as we possibly can and that's the beauty of it. It's great, especially in this day and age, because by the time she gets to secondary school, or gets, not maybe to secondary, but everyone's going to have, they're going to be standard, bog standard, you know? Everyone's going to be carrying one in their bag. At some point, you can see it coming. So at least she's got a head start on everyone that's... I wouldn't know how to use one. So she's got a head start on me for a start. We're not, we're not sort of saying, do it this way, do it that way. They're making their own decision and all we're doing is guiding them. Mm, absolutely. This is, the, this is what we think is the way you should do it. Not necessarily that's the way they're going to do it. And like you said, it should be fun. Of you know, it's, it's become a dirty word, you know, talking, talking about fun in education, <clears throat> but as adult learners, we certainly wouldn't pursue, yeah. pursue a route if we didn't find it fun. Yeah. You know, if, I wouldn't pick up a, a badminton racket or a chessboard or look at a new piece of software if I didn't think I was going to get some enjoyment yeah. out of it. So why should we expect pupils to learn in the same way? Why should we expect a pupil to just sit down there and absorb something because we've told them to? Uh, as human beings, our burning urge is to connect with people. I guess, you know, that, that's why we're here, we're social animals, we yeah. want to communicate, we want to share yeah. ideas. And that's never more clearer than walking around the school, <laughs> after, walking around the Alton School after, you know, a, a day with the kids and, and all they want to know is, did you get my email, Mr Nash? Have you replied to my email? Did you like the picture I sent you? Did you see the little story that I've just beamed across to you? What did you think of it? You know, that, that's the kind of level that they're at. That's, that... what, that's what engages them. They want to be able to connect. This provides an opportunity for, for the children to engage in their learning in a way that I haven't ever seen before. It, 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 it is a completely new dimension.
I suppose a common question amongst teachers um, is whether this technology is a threat. Uh, the fact that a child can, uh, in real time, Google them to see if they're right or wrong. I think that looking at it as a threat is the wrong approach. Yes, it will um, change teaching practice or can change teaching practice, but good teachers are good teachers, regardless of, of what technology is being, being employed. At Michigan State University, my colleague Kim Frank and I have been uh, working on a theory that's uh, trying to adopt an ecological perspective to explain how technology works uh, with teachers in the classroom or in a school. And this theory uh, compares um, a school or classroom uh, to an ecosystem in which we view all the teachers, students, and computers and other technologies uh, as uh, species. Uh, as organic species, these are selfish, and so that means they watch for, out for their own interest and they fight to survive. So when sometimes when the two species perform the same function, in essence they're competing with each other, the computers might be able to present better information more effectively than a teacher. Therefore the teachers will lose its niche and the teacher has to redefine his or her role to do something else. So if teachers do not change their role and continue to perform the presentation of information function, which actually can be performed better by a computer, and the teacher might uh, uh, be wiped out. There's a great danger that, uh, that we believe uh, techno-hype, that, that particular technologies are going to be radically changing our world, and if we don't let our children participate uh, in that world by using these technologies, we're doing them a, a, a great uh, disservice. But we need to think about the past of, uh, of techno-hype. We've been here before. We've been told again and again that the world is, uh, is changing uh, uh, so radically that we can't uh, understand it uh, any longer. And yet we still have schools, we still have, uh, we still have universities, we still have books, we still have exercise books, we still use pencils and uh, pens uh, in school. And we should, when we hear the techno-hype, remember that that we still have to teach people to, to read and write, to draw, to paint, um, and that uh, mobile phones and computers are not likely to replace that uh, in, in, uh, in the future, at least not the, not, the, not the near future. We are in a state of future shock, certainly a lot of the meetings that I've attended, talking about how educational content is commissioned, for example, um, as if we have time, as if we're in control. The reality is we're not. It's like the music industry, the film industry, and the book publishing industry. Nothing is immune from the digital wave. Yeah, when I was young, we didn't have calculators, we didn't have mobile phones, we had these things, slide rules. And then the calculator came along, this then became redundant. Then you had to get a scientific calculator. And in effect, the courses at school were gauged on them. I see the same thing with mobile phones. Your mobile phone will be your slide rule or your calculator in the future. And why shouldn't it be used? I've always felt that when they say, right, no calculators, no slide rules, no anythings, no computers, no nothings, when you sit an exam, well, that's all very well. But in real life, you have these things at your fingertips.
I think the more you try to contain the stuff, the more young people will find a way around it. I think a question we have to ask ourselves is whether we can see the world through the same eyes as a seven-year-old. Um, and I think the reality is no. Um, you know, we have to engage with that generation. We have to observe. Um, but I don't think that you can uh, in any way pretend to, to know what, what, what it's like to have been immersed. We need to feel free to, to, to do what we want to do with, uh, with technology. We need to reject these voices that tell us that they already know what the future is all about and, uh, and what technology is, is going to do. The future is ours to, as to make and we should feel, feel free to make it as we want. The issue is not that uh, mobile phones should be banned in school. It's that teachers need uh, more help and more training in order to be able to be confident in using them within teaching and learning. And I don't think it's a hard nut to crack actually.